That's right, we're doing this. I see you fell for the clickbait title. Today, we are going to talk about feminism. That's right, I said it. The big ol' F-bomb. Now before you X out of this, I too was very reluctant to call myself a feminist. And now I find myself to be a very proud feminist, and I'm also minoring in women's studies. Which I did by accident because I took three classes last semester that counted towards the minor. And I only need three more, so you know, I mean, just go with what works. Now before I get started, I do want to put out a massive disclaimer that I am not some all-knowing feminist. I know for a fact that there are going to be some things that I leave out just for the sake of brevity. I mean, heck, I can't even spell feminine right the first time and I struggle saying feminine Feminine, femininity, no, feminine. I'm gonna start off with a very basic definition of feminism. Feminism is the movement for social, political, and economic equality for men and women. To give you a very brief history of feminism, it's been broken down into three waves. The first wave started in the late 1800s and went to about the 1920s, and the main goal for that was women's suffrage. The second wave of feminism was more in the 1960s, and it focused more towards the political equality for women specifically trying to get the passing of the Equal Rights Amendment. And the third wave is what we are living in. The third wave focuses more on that social part of equality for men and women. One big part of the third wave is what is called intersectionality. Intersectionality is recognizing that not everybody faces oppression in the same way. Intersectionality looks at oppression based on things like race, gender, sexual identity, class, age, and even whether or not you're able-bodied. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I was very reluctant to adopt the term feminist to describe myself. But then something went viral on the internet which made me think, maybe I am a feminist. I'm talking about the I don't need feminism because pictures. And it really pissed me off. When I was reading those, I kept thinking to myself, none of these people know what feminism is. So that's when I educated myself and realized I was a feminist. So now I'm going to address these reasons given for why people don't need feminism. And keep in mind, all of these are real reasons that real people have said. I don't need feminism because female empowerment implies that women are inherently weak. Uh, actually stereotypes about women imply that we are inherently weak. Feminism seeks to empower women to disprove that stereotype. Stereotype. I don't need feminism because I like it when men compliment my body. Yes, but there's a difference between a compliment and blatant catcalling. I don't need feminism because I made my own choice to be a stay-at-home mother. Feminism actually supports that choice, whether or not you decide to go work, have kids, not have kids, or be a stay-at-home mom. The men in my life respect me. That's awesome for you, but that's not the case for a lot of women. Equality of opportunity already exists. Okay, then explain to me why it's statistically proven that A, women who have children are less likely to be hired for a job, and B, when women who are already working decide to have children, they are less likely to be chosen for promotions and special projects. Feminism rejects femininity. Actually, it doesn't. It does the opposite. Feminism supports that any expression of gender should be accepted. I don't need feminism because I don't belittle men. I don't belittle men either because I accept that they too are human beings and that they deserve fundamental rights. The same fundamental rights that feminism is trying to fight for. I believe in equality regardless of gender. That's cool. So does feminism. I don't hate men. That's cool, neither do I, but you can still be a feminist and not hate men. Sexism only exists in the Western world. Then maybe you can explain to me why there are bride burnings in India and why there is a high rate of female infanticide in China. I don't need feminism because it's the 21st century. You do realize that the reason it's so great to be a woman in the 21st century is because of the feminists in the 20th century, right? I don't need feminism because I can speak for myself. Oh my god, do you even- have you been listening that's what feminism supports I need minimism because <laughs> Yeah, minimism is ridiculous. The word you're looking for is feminism. Because feminism is working towards breaking down the patriarchal stereotypes that constrict both women and men. So can men be feminists? Absolutely, of course. Feminism is there for any man who has been made fun of for crying, any little boy who wasn't good at football and wanted to go to dance classes. It's there for guys who feel the pressure to have a six pack because Magic Mike says you should. So how can you be a good feminist? We need to be good feminists so that we can overshadow the bad ones. The biggest thing is being aware of in which ways you are privileged. The other thing is to know when it's your place to step out of something. You should also be willing to learn more and also be willing to admit that you're wrong. You also need to care about issues that might not affect you. 
Whether or not girls in Africa have access to clean water doesn't affect me, but it does keep them from going to school when they have to walk 20 miles to a well. And most importantly, feminism just teaches that women deserve the same fundamental rights as men. Not because I'm someone's daughter or someone's wife or someone's girlfriend or sister or mother but because I'm a human being. If nothing has gotten through to you, let me put it like this. When you say you're against feminism, you're against all of the women who were arrested and violently force-fed so you could vote. When you say you're anti-feminist, you don't care about the policies that give you property rights. You insult every action made so that women can have equal access to education. You're perpetuating the idea that if a woman is raped, we should teach her to cover up, not punish the rapist. You shame every woman in the military who is fighting for your right to free speech, which you use to insult feminism. And most importantly, you're sitting back saying, this is how things are, I guess, and doing absolutely nothing about it. Fun fact, Rosie the Riveter wasn't some feminist icon from World War II. She was just one poster in a series of many that were hung up in one factory, not several across the United States, just one. And then two weeks later, she was taken down and the next poster went up. So... You're welcome for ruining Rosie the Riveter for you.